Good morning, church. Uh, it is time for us to get started with our morning worship. Uh, we're going to open with a, a normal song like we, we always do. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to As uh, I'm sure all of you have heard the storms, tornadoes and such in Kentucky and their surrounding states, uh, there's members of Church in Christ in Kentucky that's working hard to serve their communities. And uh, if you turn your bulletin over to the other side, there's some uh, names and contact information for some of those churches if you feel inclined to donate. This is where you know you're money is going to be well spent and uh, Bill Walker is hoping to get to his sisters in Beatrice on the 24th and uh, here in the bulletin it has a mailing address for his sister so if you wanted to send him a card of encouragement that would be great. The Youth in Action is coming up in Kansas City on January 14th through the 17th so if you're in that age group and inclined, you might write that down and plan ahead for it. At this time, Joseph will lead us in an opening prayer. Please pray with me. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for bringing us all together, Lord. We ask you to please continue to watch over us and bless us and... Um, Help us to keep our ears uh, focused on to what is taught today and um, keep you in our hearts always. We love you so much. Amen. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, 
tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Uh, after this next song, we'll be led in prayer by James. Here we are but straying pilgrims, here our path is often dim. But to cheer us on our journey, still we sing this wayside hymn. Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions arrive, Soon we'll be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Here our feet are often weary on the hills that throng our way. Here the tempest darkly gathered, but our hearts within us say, Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions arrive, soon will be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Here our souls are often fearful of the pilgrim's lurking foe, but the Lord is our defender, and he tells us we may know yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions arise soon will be our home forever and the smile of the blessed giver glides all our Good morning, church. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. We are just so grateful that we're able to be here this morning. Lord, we know it's cold outside, but it's warm in here with the fellowship that we have with one another. We just pray that you'll be with all those who are on our prayer list, dear Lord. You know the reasons that they're on there, and you, you know the comfort that they need. We just pray that you'll be with them and watch over them. Lord, we know a lot of people are sick and hurting at this time. It's just a time of the season where sniffles or something that, that just kind of come with our lives. Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to help everyone to get healthy who needs to get healthy, that you'll be with them and watch over them, dear Lord. We also pray that you'll be with Bobby this morning as he brings a lesson to us. Lord, we just pray that you'll help him to have the words that he needs to say that, that we can take and we can apply throughout our, our week this, this week, dear Lord. Just be with him and, and, and watch over him as he preaches to us this morning. 
Lord, we pray you'll be with all the families who have been affected by the severe weather that we've had recently. Watch over them, be with them, be with the first responders who are doing their best to help in the wake of what's happened, dear Lord. Just, just be with everyone who's involved with that. Put your loving arms around them and comforting arms around them as well. Lord, again, we're just so grateful that all of us are able to be here this morning. Be with those who cannot be with us. Lord, again, watch over them and be with them. We love you and we thank you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father glorious or all victorious come and reign over us ancient of days come thou incarnate word gird on thy mighty sword our prayer attend Come and thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness on us descend. O Lord our God, to thee the highest praise is be. Evermore, thy sovereign majesty, may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. Uh, after this next song, we'll have our communion. Uh, if you forgot to pick up your communion element when you came in. Uh, just raise your, raise your hand during this song and we'll have someone bring them to you. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died Oh, 
such a crown his dying crimson life a robe spreads o'er his body on the to all the glory and all the glory is dead to me were the whole realm of nature mine that were a present far too small love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my Lord. Morning, family. Morning. Take this time to, uh, to remember our Savior. I'm um, looking at Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, chapter 9, uh, the Hebrew writer is trying to contrast the Old Testament or covenant with the New. Uh, we have the New Covenant, obviously. But the benefit to that is in the last two verses, and it's for us. Um, we're waiting for our Savior to come back. He came the first time uh, to find and show a path for us for salvation. Um, the, old, the old way didn't do that. It kind of helped us get there, but the new way of through him and his sacrifice gives us that chance to be in heaven with, with God at some point. Uh, we know that we all die. Um, but we have to be prepared. And, and as a Christian, we are ready to be in heaven. And we just need to fulfill this, this promise and this, this uh, way of remembering him. Uh, we have these emblems, the bread and the fruit of the vine, uh, which gives us a way to remember his sacrifice. It gives us that chance to understand and to remember what he did for us. Uh, I'm going to read the last two verses of Hebrew uh, chapter 9. And it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Let's take this time to remember our Savior. Will you go in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, as we come in prayer, we want to give the honor and glory at this time to our Savior, to Jesus who uh, left heaven for us, Father, to come to this earth, to live a life, to, sh to teach, to show us a path of salvation, ultimately sacrificing himself for us, Father. We know through the, through the bread, the emblem of, of the, his body that he shed for us, that we have that chance to be with you. And we will remember that, 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 that sacrifice at this time, Father. Uh, we want to to remember him and his love by showing our love through this remembrance. We love you so much, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You pray with me again, please. Father in heaven, as we continue our remembrance of Jesus we uh, thank you so much for for his love and his sacrifice again by shedding of his blood uh, that washes away our sins to be with you someday in heaven we want to now take this time to take this emblem in a manner that is pleasing to you to remember again that love that was shown to us Again, we love you so much and in Jesus name we pray amen At this time, we find this is convenient to, uh, 
to say a prayer for our giving. Uh, if you'd like to give back, <clears throat> there's a clear box that you can give your giving. Um, at this time, we feel this is appropriate for a prayer. Let's, let's go in prayer again, please. Father in heaven, as again, as we come in prayer, um, we're just so truly thankful for the many blessings you've given to us. We know we have the blessing of Jesus, but we know as we live our lives, we have the blessings uh, that you give us each and every day. And sometimes, Father, we forget that. Uh, but we know that everything that we have comes from you. We thank you for the material things that we have, our families, the family that comes together in your name. Father, we just want to uh, take this time to thank you for what you've given to us and that what we give back, a uh, portion of what you've given to us, will help further your kingdom here. We love you so much, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After this song, we'll have our scripture reading and our lesson. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that our purest gold though often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophet my pillow a stone and though i find here no permanent dwelling I know he'll give me a mansion my own. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city i want a mansion a robe and a crown i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold i'll be reading from matthew chapter 5 verse 6 Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. I will also be reading from...
from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 44. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. I will lastly be reading from Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Thank you, Andrew. I made a promise to you all this morning. I will not be preaching when the sun comes up tomorrow morning. <laughs> it is good to be able to come and speak about our God and our Creator and our Lord and our Savior. Things that mean so much to each and every one of us. These are the things that our purpose in life. The purpose of man. That's what we want to talk about this morning. The purpose of man. Every one of us in here has a purpose. Stop and think when you were young. The purpose was to get through that long day that we had when we were playing as children. Remember how long those days were? Now our purpose in life as we get older is how to get everything crammed into that very short day. I think most of you know what I'm talking about there. But we have a purpose. Stop and think about a purpose. Well, yesterday, the men came together about 0800 yesterday morning. That's 8, 8 a.m. for the civilians. About 0800, and we had a time to eat to happen to have commun uh, communion with each other to learn a little bit more about the word of the Lord. And I've had in my own mind that it was interesting yesterday as we talked and we up and communed and we studied and learned a lot of the things that we talked about yesterday morning, we will also hear again this morning. When we look at the purpose of man, I went and started this study, started looking down through the Lord's Word, called the Bible, to find just how many verses there are throughout His Word that pertain to us and the purpose that we have in our lives. I got to 55 verses. I said that was too long. We weren't going to go, try to go through all them this morning. I got to 55 and basically quit. I'm not going to say I quit. I said it was enough. I was not going to go through all 55 verses. You know, when we look at man, looks at us, we only have one purpose to fulfill, and that is a purpose to fulfill for our God and our Creator. One job that we have, if you really get right down to it. Now we know that man is both a spiritual and a physical being. So we are particularly suited, as God made us, for this purpose. We are to choose our reactions in our life. I said, go back and look at our purpose when we were young. Purpose now. To get in the vehicle and go somewhere. You have a purpose. In our life, we have a purpose. Whatever the circumstances might be that are put in front of us, we have a purpose in which to get by them. How do we do that? God wants us to be free and make our own decisions, but he also wants us to look at him for our strength and our guidance. We have responsibilities. How do we compare ourselves to the word that the Lord has given to us? Or is it meaningful in our lives that we are doing and following the word that he is giving us. When we're done, we, we have a potential, a purpose, a potential for living our life. And really it starts in an awareness of a reality well beyond that which defines us and directs what we do. Let's talk a little bit about something that most of us have been heard many a time. When we go to study, we hear lessons that are given. We can go back to Paul. 
Go back to Acts, the 17th chapter. This is, as we would say, one of these classic sermons that could be presented time and time again. But it talks to us about a purpose. We know that Paul preached in many of the cities, but he also preached in the city of Athens in the 17th chapter of Acts. We know that his, he and the ones that were with him had a, just came through Asia Minor, crossed into Europe in Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea. Paul met opposition every time that he talked. Every time that he preached Jesus, he had opposition. And we can also see that he had severe persecution. But he also, we can see, started good, strong starts of the church in each one of these cities. But Paul then went on and came to Athens. This city was the capital of Acacia. It was the chief city in the area. It was a center of learning and philosophy. It was also called, as we see in Acts 17, 16, it was a city full of idols. And that is what just called forth this classic sermon that we have up and heard so much about over the years. We know that Paul started his sermon or his talk by saying the following in Acts 17, 22. He says, Ye men of Athens, in all things I perceive that you are very religious. He commended them on being that way. He goes on to show that their religion was incorrect. Or we could just flatly say wrong. But he found a starting point, which what he, was what he was after, a starting point. He spoke of their altar, which was inscribed to an unknown God. And proceeded to tell them about what? The one true God. We see in, again, 17, Acts 17, 24 and following. Where it is written, it says, The God that made the world and all things therein. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me. <clears throat> this is a very dry building. And it continues. He made of every one nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed seasons and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek God. <clears throat> it goes on and says, For we are also his offspring. This was not only their purpose in life, but it is our purpose in life also. <clears throat> when God created us, he created us to seek after him. But he also created us in our human side. We could say that we are a creature of appetites. <coughs> we have physical appetites. We have desires that God put within us. Stop and think about that. We hunger for food. We get thirsty. We crave sleep. We have sexual desires. We need the company of other people. God created us with these desires and appetites. Genesis 1, verse 26 and following. It says, God said, let us make this man in our own image. After our likeness. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good. God created us and also provided the means by which all of our appetites can be satisfied. <coughs> but at the same time, 
He gave us restrictions that require that we control our appetites. <clears throat> Physical things alone, no matter how abundant they are, can never satisfy man. Because man has a spiritual appetite also. Stop and think about that in your own life. We note the following statement it was written by an individual for the World Book many years ago. Probably holds true here to a certain degree. It says every religion includes ethics or codes of conduct, but religion is more than ethics. Ethics ask the following, how should we treat other people? Religion asks, how should we relate ourselves to the greatest power of the universe? Religion has been one of the greatest forces in history. For those of us that read history and have studied, we can see that. There has never been a people that is, did not have some form of religion. Go back to the Athenians at that point in time. Man has an appetite that what seeks after God. For what? For satisfaction. If a society of mankind has never heard of the true God, these people have shown over the ages that they will invent a God. For man is going to worship something. Many lessons can be, what do we worship besides God this day and age? Your imagination can be wild. But we see that that's just what the Athenians did, didn't they? They had a God of unknown. But Jesus says in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Just as natural as our body hungers for food and thirsts for drink, so it is natural for the soul to hunger and thirst after God. We know that the prophet of old in Amos, the 8th chapter, verse 11, said the following, Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. A famine was coming. And these are the words that he up and wrote and expounded upon many years ago. That we have a thirst for the God and the word that he has given us. Nothing else can satisfy our spiritual being, our spiritual needs. Okay? We also know that Solomon recorded his search for the purpose of man's life, the purpose of man. We see that in the book of Ecclesiastics. That purpose was not found in wisdom, was it? It was not found in accomplishments. It was not found in riches, or nor was it found in pleasure. So it is important that each of these things may be solid summed it up. And as we read, and Andrew read a little while ago, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. A simple statement, but means so much to us. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We have a purpose. That is why God created man. That's why he gave him breath. That is why we live. It's a reason for our lives. As Jesus points out to the same truth in these words in Luke 12, verse 15, it says, A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Stop and think about those words. Even if we can satisfy every physical need that we have, there is still something missing. We need 
God. Can't say it enough, can bring its importance out enough that we need God. But we are to seek after him. Sometimes to some individuals, it seems a strange statement that we should seek after God. Is God that hard to find? Ask yourself that question right at the moment. Is God that hard to find? We'll all answer it a little bit different. We do not seek God because he's hard to find. Stop and think about that. But because we are the ones that's lost. That should be earth shattering right there. Because without God and the direction that he has placed for us to follow, what do we have? We are empty and we're without a purpose. How and where do I find God? Ask that question. Some seek God in idols. Lessons that have been taught over the years. An idol. Stop and think about it. I can afford Mustang sitting in the garage. That could be my idol. No, it's not. I have no idols. I have God. Simple things that we up and put up ahead of God are considered idols. That's another lesson we won't add there. Okay? We know that the people of Athens had gods. Little God here, little God here. There's only one big G, God. That's our creator. Some seek God in the teachings of men. This also fails. The way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Jeremiah 10, 23. Whose steps do we follow? The Lord and Savior that was talked about a little while ago when we remembered in our communion and our partaking of the loaf and partaking of the fruit of the vine to remember Jesus Christ. Some say God in human wisdom. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, starting with about verse 18. It says, The word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved it is the power of God. Continues, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? The foolishness of God is wiser than men. Remember, he created us. We think we're smart. We think we're better. No, because we haven't gone to God where we need to. So how, where and how do we seek God? Think about that. Question ourselves. Paul gives us an answer. The word of the cross. We go to the cross for the answer. We go to the word that God has given us from his word to get the answer. We seek after God by faith. We use Hebrews 9 a moment ago. Go to Hebrews 11. But just as Abel, Noah, Abraham, and Moses did, by faith, they did what the God had told them to do. In fact, we read in Hebrews eleven six, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that seek after him. We have a purpose. Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. Simple, to the point, and very direct. We must seek God in his word. Again, the Bible. The word that the writers have given to us from God. It reveals his character. Think about that. The character of God. It reveals his nature. It reveals his purpose for us. 
It reveals His promises. It reveals His wisdom. And it reveals His salvation for us. If we would know anything about God, we must look to His Word, for it reveals Him to us. So the best way to see God is to look at His holy begotten Son, as we see in John 3.16, which we probably, most of us have memorized because Jesus said in John 14, 9, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus demonstrated the love of the Father for us in going to the cross. Going to the cross to sacrifice. Sacrifice for what? Our sins. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life, for his friends. Jesus showed just how much God wants us to be saved. 1 Timothy 2 verses 3 and 4. By shedding his blood for us that we might be reconciled to our God and creator. Through the blood of his cross. Colossians 1 20 or Romans 5 9 and following. Not only does Jesus reveal God to us. He also reveals the way to God for us. I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Major words in our life, in our being, in our purpose. There are some ways that we should seek after God. The Athenians were seeking to appease God by their worship, okay, even though their worship was wrong, based on an ignorance of the true God and the nature that God has. It's still a seeking process for them. Abel was seeking after God when he offered the sacrifice in generation, uh, Genesis 4.4. 4. Jesus explained to us and explain to the Samaritan woman in John 4, 23 and following, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such doth the Father seek us to be his worshipers. Our worship is designed by God for the express purpose gathering together as the Lord's family, the Lord's church. When we come together, as we see in Acts, the second chapter and following, we come to pray. We come to sing. We come to study. We come to partake of the Lord's Supper. And we come to lay by in store. Five things that we know that when we come together, we can expect to happen in spirit and in truth. Because why? We are seeking after God. We seek after God by obedient service. Back to Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Fear God and keep his commandments. To some, that fear came up and asked a lot of major questions in our own mind. It did yesterday morning in the men's breakfast. But it is to have the proper reverence and the awe for him, God, so that we do whatever is required of us to serve him. We please him without being influenced by the opinions of other people. We do not give account to anyone but God for our actions. To fear is to act against his will. The language we use, fear, can mean one thing, but here is what fear should mean to us. It really should not be difficult for us to find God. For as Paul states in Acts 17, verses 27 and following, he is not far from each of us, for in him we live 
and move and have our being. Continues. For we are also his offspring. Simple. Our purpose, God, our purpose that God gives to us is to what? Seek after him. For he is our creator. He is our source. He is our life. You know, it's a shame for a person to go through a life and never realize the purpose for which God created them. It was in this case that the people of Athens stood. So don't let that case be in you. Seek after God. Take these heart words to heart. Take them to mind. Study, learn, and grow. We come together to have warmth and love. I don't mean body warmth. I'm talking about the warmth of companionship. Together, when we do that, we come to seek him because we come to seek each other and the love that we have. Stop and think about these things. How important it is in our lives. Is it important? It should be. Take these words to heart. We up and say, think about them. But also we say, if you haven't already put yourself in the position to seek after God in your life, we offer a time to do that. If you haven't decided to seek after God in the things that you do every day in your life, we offer a time to do that. We offer a time to put God in your life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by coming to him in baptism. Have we need, do we have a need to do that? A question that you need to ask yourselves. Or have I stepped away from God? Have I put him on the back burner to where I'm not thinking about God and Christ first? If we need to have the prayers of this congregation and of the elders and the preachers that are here, now's the time to come forward as we prepare to stand and sing in just a moment. Do you have a need? Do you have a purpose in your life to put God first? A question that you have to answer for yourself. If you have a need, come forward as we stand and sing. Skippy. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, we'll have Jake lead us in a closing prayer. Be about with me. Uh, Father God, I thank you for this morning and time just to uh, gather and worship your name and hear a portion of your word. And God, I ask that you help us to fill our hearts and our minds with you and, and the lesson and to um, seek you out, seek your truth, and to live lives for you. Uh, help us to also share your love with everyone that we come in contact with. Uh, be with us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.